Good. Well, it's good morning. I was going to say good afternoon. Depending on where you are, it's either good morning or good afternoon. But uh, hello to all the viewers, listeners of the Sean Tabbitt Show on Facebook. I'm excited today to be talking to Terry Lynn Underwood. We're going to be talking about her brand new book. So we can get it on the screen there, Praying for Girls. You got yours there too. Excellent. Um, this is a bit of a new experience for me in the sense that I do tons of podcast interviews over Skype and FaceTime, uh, but I'm actually going to do this one live and I will be turning it into a podcast episode later. So if you're watching this, you're seeing something that's never happened before. So Terry Lynn, thanks for being a part of this experiment with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Well, and uh, I actually work for Bethany House, so I've known about this book for a long time. And as a dad with six daughters, uh, it's a book that I definitely want to have uh, at my house. And uh, it's a book that my wife has already been enjoying. So uh, glad to be a part of bringing this book to light for over the past year and a half and excited to see it finally releasing in eight days. Wow. So since, since this is a podcast, we're going to get through my normal intro stuff so you can kind of watch us... Uh, do what we do here and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy the show. So today my special guest is Terry Lynn Underwood and we're discussing her new book, Praying for Girls, Asking God for the Things They Need Most. And that's published by the team here at Bethany House, where again, as I said earlier, I have the privilege of serving as the marketing manager. So Terry Lynn, I want to just say thanks so much for joining us on our first ever live show. Oh, how fun. I'm so glad to be doing it. Well, first off, I always like to start with an author's origin story. Now, this is your first time on the show, so I want the viewers who are watching us on Facebook and the listeners who are listening to us on the podcast to get a chance just to get to know you better. So tell us a bit of the Terry Lynn Underwood origin story. What are a few things we need to know about your background, and why are you the right person to have written this book? Well, I guess the big thing about me is that I just... The reason I pray scripture mostly is because I feel so inadequate as a prayer. Um, I am a study girl. I went to college on a debate scholarship. So you can throw me in a library and I am happy, happy, happy. But um, when it came to just the serious discipline of prayer, it was completely overwhelming to me. So when I got pregnant with my daughter, I thought, Lord, what am I going to do? How am I going to raise this girl in this world? And I just began to learn to pray what I was reading. And as I was studying scripture, I would just pray. Like when I was studying about Joshua and how he was strong and courageous, I would pray, Lord, please just let my daughter be strong and courageous. And oh yeah, by the way, God, could I be strong and courageous too? And um, so it just kind of grew from that. And then as she grew up and as she's 17 now. So over the years, those prayers have become less theoretical and more like, okay, I see this going on in her life. God, what does your word say about that? And how can I turn that into a prayer with the power of your word behind it? So that's kind of my story. I'm married. Scott and I have been married for 21 years. He is um, in ministry. My um, dad is a pastor. My grandfather is a pastor. My great grandfather was a pastor. So I am full out pastor's kid, pastor's wife. <laughs> you, If you if there's anything to do with the church, like I know it, I feel like I've just grown up in the church in the background and all that. And then we have this 17 year old daughter who's getting ready to start her senior year in high school. And for those of you on Facebook, obviously I don't look old enough for that. I know, but um, she is, and I am. So it is um, just a crazy season for us. It's really exciting to see her stepping in to um, the beginning stages of adulthood and see the fruit of all of our efforts and prayers. So it's exciting. That is definitely exciting. Uh, we'll have to have you write a book about what it's like to have an empty nest at some point in the future. Oh. <laughs> I know. I'm not so sure she's ever going to leave if you want to know the truth. I think we've maybe made it too comfortable here. <laughs> Yeah, our our youngest is uh, about nineteen months, and so I'm I'm gonna have the empty nest when I'm in my mid mid to late fifties. So I've got a, a few more years to go. So if you write that book sometime in the next few years, I can read it when I get closer. All right, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, next, let's get into what I like to call the story behind the book. So obviously, these are things that you've worked out over time as you've been parenting and and praying for your, for your own daughter. But I'm Curious, you know, as you talked with your friends and were doing ministry, what were the sorts of things that encouraged you that this was a book that needed to be written? What were the problems or questions people were coming to you with that made you go, ah, we need a book on praying for girls? You know, I think it was just honestly that I have, 
I've just mentored um, a lot of women and Scott did student ministry for a lot of years. So I've spent a lot of time with teenage girls and I just could see that there were some pretty common things that the girls dealt with, but also that as moms, we felt very inadequate about. And what I learned is a lot lot of times they were the same things. The things the girls were dealing with that they felt so uncertain about were the same things that as moms we were still struggling with. And so I just kind of dug into scripture and I started um, just sharing with people, hey, this is what I'm praying. And I wrote a blog post that turned into a blog series that kind of turned into everything else. And I do these prayer calendars for moms every month and just been amazed at the way that God has used just this practice that I started honestly out of ineptitude. I feel like, like I didn't know what else to do. So I started praying scripture and all these moms are like, oh my gosh, show me how to do that. What do I do? And so the book kind of morphed from all of these other things that I had been doing for years. And it just seemed, um, it seemed like the next step, the next thing to give moms just this foundation that they could use and then apply it for themselves. When I think of praying for my own children, one of the things we often can get stuck in and maybe even be in a bit of a rut with is praying very specific need-based prayers. And while there's nothing wrong uh, with that in particular, you, like you've been saying, you really are pushing us to be focused on praying scripture for our daughters. So uh, I guess my question would be, what does it look like, you know, when we transition from just praying about the daily needs uh, to praying scripture into those situations, what, what's, uh, what sort of transformation might, might we be expecting or, or how, how do people often respond? Wow, this really has shifted my prayer life. I think what happens when we're praying scripture is that we have um, this ability to step outside of our own desires for our children. When I pray need-based prayers, it tends to be, um, okay, this is going on. God, fix it. You know, that's what I need you to yep. do, Lord, right yep. now. But when I am praying systematically through scripture, then I am praying more to align my heart and my daughter's heart with the revealed will of God. And so it's less about what I see that she needs and more about what God's word reveals about him and aligning herself to him. And how can I be a part of helping her do that and guide her to that? So I think it shifts the focus maybe from what we can see to what God can see. And I think that's such a big thing for us um, because it takes a lot of the pressure off of us. If we're aligning our prayers with the revealed heart of God, then suddenly we don't have to worry if we're praying the right things or if we're praying selfishly. So for me, that's been the huge thing. One thing I often think a lot about when it comes to parenting and, and discipling our own children, you know, people often say things are more caught than they're taught, so to speak. And I'm curious, you know, when we're praying for scripture for our daughters and being more intentional about that, what are some of the ways that we can help them to understand the things that we're praying for them? Because I, I think it's important for them to see how we're modeling and working this out in their own life. I, I, I think they need to know that we're praying for them, we're interceding for them, but I think we're also discipling and teaching them something in that process. So what are some of the creative ways that we can bring them uh, into that process? You know, Sean, that was my favorite thing in the book, but it actually, I have to admit right here to you and everyone that it was not my idea to include it. Um, my dear friend, Kristen Schell, who I think you may know, she um, is fabulous and she has three daughters who, um, one is a little bit younger than Castillo and they'd step down from that. And we were talking about the book and she goes, but Terry Lynn, you have to tell us how to do it. And she said, I mean, I want my girls to know this stuff. And I was like, oh, my gosh, Kristen, I don't know. How do I do that? And she goes, you can do it. You can do it. And so I just sat down. I was like, Lord, how do we take these huge ideas from Scripture, like being made in your image, and explain them to our daughters in a way that it becomes tangible and real for them? And so... I started thinking it doesn't work the same way for a toddler as it does for a teenager. So obviously there was going to have to be kind of stepping stones. And so we just, I don't know, I just prayed and I talked to a lot of other moms and I was like, what are some things that might work for this? And that was probably the most collaborative part of the book that we did was putting in these action steps for moms. So like with little girls, it's very hands on and activities. And then for those tween years, it's kind of a combination of hands on activities, but also conversation starters. And then basically for girls like my daughter's age, um, 
it's really just about having the conversation, being really intentional about saying, this is something I'm struggling with, or I have struggled with, and this is what God's word tells me about that. And so I want you to know that. So when this comes up in your life, or if this comes up in your life, you'll know what to do. And I think that to me, while it wasn't my idea originally, and I can't take credit for it, I think it's probably the most important part of the book in a lot of ways, because it takes it from something that's happening privately between me and the Lord into something that's happening collaboratively between me and God and my daughter. And I think that's incredibly powerful. One of the areas I think parents can really struggle when it comes to praying for their children is if their child is facing some area in life that they've struggled with in the past, that they've not had success with in the past, uh, I, I think there can be a tendency for parents to feel like, since I failed here, I'm not qualified to pray for my child in that area. Uh, talk to the mom and even the dad who who might have that thought, you know, just because I, I failed there, I can't pray for my child about that. Tell us why that's a lie and, and why it's important that uh, we need to bring our, our own understanding, our own ex- in a, our own experiences and how we can be praying for those situations. Um, I think that's really important, Sean, because like I said at the very beginning, honestly, most of what I pray for my daughter, especially those needs that she has are things that are still very real in my own heart. And I may be a little further down the line with them, but I really still struggle about keeping my heart focused on God or keeping my mind stayed in the word or remembering that God has a purpose for my life. And so as I was writing this book and as I prayed for Cassidy and for other girls that I know, I've often found that when I'm in the middle of praying for them, all of a sudden I realize I'm not praying for them anymore. I'm praying for myself. And so there's this part of me that wants to sit down and just look at moms and say, it's okay that this is real for you because all of this truth that God has given us in his word for our daughters, that we're so quick to speak over them, is also the same truth that he has for us as his daughters. And we can speak that same truth over ourselves and walk in that confidence, not in who we are, but in who he is and how he transforms us. And his word can infiltrate all of those hidden things in our heart. And it brings them to light, not to make us feel worse, but to clean it up and let us be purified by him and by his power. And so I think that's so important for moms and for dads. I can't really speak as a dad, obviously, <laughs> but, um, you know, these are things Scott and I talk about as we, as they relate to Cassidy all the time. And, I'll, and I've gone to him and said, can you please pray for me? Because I'm really struggling with where I fit in to this world right now. And so I think it's just, it's useful for dads to know these things, because I'm guessing it's not intuitive for dads to get how girls think, you know? And so I think this book, while it's not written to dads, I think it could be really useful for dads to be able to go, oh my gosh, this is what all of these girls in my house are thinking. And this is really helpful to me because maybe I don't get it, but I can still pray for them. So I think that's um, something that was unintended. Really, I hadn't it hadn't crossed my mind. And um, I got an email actually last week late from a dad whose wife had read one of the early copies of the book. And he just sent me an email and he goes, I think you're making a mistake here. He goes, you need to be telling dads they need to read this book. And I was like, what? And he said, I'm serious. He said, this has helped me so much to understand what is going on in my daughter's life and my wife's heart and how to encourage and nurture them. And he said, it's just incredibly useful. And I don't know, I just sat and wept because I thought, I cannot believe that God takes this little message that he's put in my heart. And he does so much more with my meager efforts than I could even dream. You know, I mean, like scripture just is happening all around me right now and it's overwhelming and I'm so grateful. Well, I think what you pointed out there um, is a, a really good thing for dads to understand in the sense that a lot of times we we don't really necessarily know what to be praying about for our, our girls because we feel like we don't understand what they're going through. I feel like I have a much easier time praying for my sons. Uh, I have a son who's 17 right now. He's going through all the same things I went through as a 17 year old. I can pray very specifically for some of the challenges he's facing. Um, but I have a daughter also who's 18 and never been an 18 year old girl. So I don't, I don't understand her journey quite as well. So that's, uh, you know, I, I think that's one way that this book could be very useful for dads. And I mean, come on, look at, look at this cover. If you're a dad, let's see if I can get it on camera here. It's like all reversed in my office here. Um, 
I've, I've been so pleased with the, the cover we ended up with for this and just all the creative pieces and ads. Every time I see that cover, I just get a happy feeling, probably just because I have so many little girls. But uh, right. it, it's, it's fun to see a book like this that I would normally think that only women are going to be reading and already to hear that you're getting testimonials of dads who are being impacted with, uh, you know, that was a whole, that's a whole nother market that I, we weren't necessarily thinking this book was going to serve. So even before the book is released, dads are being encouraged. So I'm really excited to hear that. Yeah, that was a big moment for me. I mean, I really did. I just stopped and I just thought, God, you are doing something that I couldn't come up with on my own. And it's just how God works and how generous he is with us when we're just willing to say, okay, this is what I know. It's a little bit, but it's a big God. And so I'm going to let him use it. Well, Terry Lynn, as you think of readers say, getting to that final page of praying for girls, if they could only take away one thing, you know, whether that's a, a call to action or just a different way of viewing how they're praying for your girls, what do you hope each and every reader comes away with after interacting with your book? I think there's two things, so forgive me. <laughs> one is You're that free. I hope these moms and anybody that reads, aunt, dad, grandma, whatever, you know, anybody that reads it, I hope that inside of these words, they will find this confidence that God speaks all of those same things over them and just a keen awareness of the love that God has for each one of us and the desires that he has for all of us, but also that moms will feel empowered to be able to say, you know, I'm going to pray this for my daughter because it's in God's word and I can, you know, and not feel so hesitant and uncertain because I think sometimes we limit what we allow God to do because we're so afraid that we're going to ask for too much. And I mean, I just don't think there's too much we can ask from God when it comes to what he's revealed in his word and asking him to make that real and prominent in our kids' lives and in our own lives. So I guess that's really the two things. One, that moms would believe it for themselves. And second, that they would just pray with boldness for their daughters. One other question uh, I just feel like I should throw in, uh, when it comes to some of the practical ways that people can use the book, talk to us about some of the prompts and the things you have in there just to make it a real turnkey and easy experience so people can start reading the book and putting it to use right away. Oh, that was my favorite part because um, I'm a mom and I'm really busy and I don't know any moms who aren't. And so we worked really hard to make the chapters super easy to read and, you know, succinct. There's not a lot of extra words in here. And the prayers are just pinpoint. They're not like big, long prayers. They're, you know, two or three sentences. And we left a lot of room in the margins for you to be able to write down, hey, this just really touched me. And, you know, I kind of, in my mind, this becomes like this journal of your prayers for your daughter. And it's all scribbled in. And like, my hope is by the end of the book, there you can't even see my words anymore. It's just covered up with these moms who prayed for their daughters. But it's just this progression. Like I tell a little bit about why it's important and then it's the prayers. And then it's, oh yeah, by the way, mom, this is for you too. And hey, let's go ahead and talk about this with our daughters. Like it's just these four steps that just kind of flow one into another. And I, like, I feel like this is something that you could pick up and just look at the table of contents and go, oh yeah, I really need to pray for this area of my daughter's life right now. And you can flip to it. It doesn't matter if you haven't read any other chapter, like just go to the one that meets your need right now. And you're there, you're right there. And so I just, I hope that's what moms get out of this is that it's super usable, super practical, but also just drenched in the word of God. Well, Terry Lynn, I think many of our viewers and listeners, if you're listening on the podcast, are going to be interested in connecting with you. So first of all, tell us where are some of the places we can find you online. And also, uh, we're, at least as far as the video goes, we're uh, eight days from release. So tell us also about some of the places we can pre-order our own copy of Praying for Girls. Okay, you can find me at terrylynnunderwood.com. Um, I write there once or twice a week. And I also have this fabulous website for girls, mom, girl moms called Prayers for Girls. We do prayer calendars every month. You can get that in your email and just use it. It's scripture-based. Um, fabulous. This month, we're actually praying through prayers from the book, which has been really fun. Um, and um, about the book, go to prayingforgirlsbook.com. We've got some fun pre-order stuff, some great resources. Um, I'm adding stuff almost every day to the resource section. So there's lots of extra stuff that just didn't fit in the book that I want to just give to people to be able to just make this come alive in their lives and in their homes. And 
find me on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. I mean, I'm just everywhere. Like, I just feel like um, if you want to know me, you just get on your computer, you can find me. <laughs> so it is, um, it's just exciting. You can pre-order the book from Amazon or Lifeway, because I'm a little Southern Baptist girl. So, you know, order from Lifeway, maybe order from Barnes and Noble. Um, I have a lot of friends who've actually gone into the bookstore and asked the bookstore to pre-order the book for them, which I just think is super cool. So if you want to just go face to face with somebody and say, Hey, I want this book, tell them to order it in the bookstore. Um, you can get it anywhere. And when you get it, just tweet and let me know because I would be so excited to hear that you've ordered or you've gotten the book. So that's it. Yeah. And that's, you know, as somebody who works with a lot of authors, that's always a great way, one, to help an author get the word out. But I find authors are very encouraged when they see people taking pictures with the book in the store when they're buying it or when it arrives in the mail, um, you know, use the hashtag for the book and just uh, help us get the word out in that way. It's always a lot of fun to also see all the different places in the country or sometimes in the world that the books happen to be showing up. So uh, if that's you, please, please let Terry Lynn know that you got the book and just help her spread the word. Uh, also, uh, as far as Terry Lynn's social media, places where you can buy the book, I'll make it easy. I'll have links in the show notes for this episode, which you'll be able to find over at SeanTabbitt.com. Either uh, if it's, the newest episode will be at the top of the main page, but otherwise just search for Praying for Girls or for Terry Lynn, and you'll find all of that content right there for you. Uh, it's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Terry Lynn Underwood. Once again, our book today was Praying for Girls, Asking God for the Things They Need Most. To connect with Terry Lynn and find out more, be sure to visit her website at terrylynnunderwood.com. And Terry Lynn, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It has been a great pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Sean. I've had fun. And thus ends what looks like a normal podcast recording session for me. It was fun to bring all of you along for uh, the journey today. Normally, this is all behind the scenes, and you only get to see the audio or listen to the audio. You can't really see the audio. I see it when I'm editing, but you don't see it when you're listening. So uh, thanks for being a part of our experiment today. Uh, we'll get this uh, edited and up on SeanTabbitt.com in a few days. So if you want to share the podcast episode when that comes out, please do that. Help us spread the word. Terry Lynn, we'll catch you later. All right. Thanks, John.